Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Kyle TV. In this episode, we'll be talking about the $100 million grant, basically, or basically the fund that may help scale Ethereum to the moon. So let's go ahead and dive right in. It says, how will a $100 million grant help Ethereum scale? Well, February 16th, six large-scale blockchain projects, Amizigo, Cosmos, Golem, Maker, and Raiden, that have completed successful multi-million dollar initial coin offerings last year, along with Japanese venture capital firm Global Brain, have created the Ethereum Community Fund to fund projects and businesses within the Ethereum ecosystem. <clears throat> now, obviously, it would be beneficial for those projects um, to, for the, obviously, the Ethereum um, ecosystem to be expanded. That way, they can build upon that network. So the ECF will begin with 100 million likely raised by the six blockchain projects. So members of the Ethereum Foundation, including Ethereum creator Vitalik Buterin, plan to advise the fund. Buterin told TechCrunch, Ethereum has grown beyond my expectations over the last few years, but the work is clearly not finished. Delivering value that matches the hype should be the mantra of 2018. Efforts such as the ECF, which help, the, help organize the development of the ecosystem, are going to help make that possible. So very interesting that he said that. I think it's very exciting, especially if you're an Ethereum holder. Um, so there is that. Buterin's personal goal of funding open source projects. It says in September 2017, Buterin revealed that his advisor shares from $1.8 billion project Amizigo and $370 million decentralized cryptocurrency exchange Kyber Network will be allocated in a private fund to finance open source project building innovative technologies such as scaling solutions for Ethereum blockchain network. Wow, that's a lot of money. Buterin emphasized that he will no longer advise any other blockchain project apart from Amizigo and Kyber Network and that all of the incentives he's received from the two blockchain projects will be used to improve the Ethereum protocol at, at the time. Buterin had said, and by the way, um, for those of you that are holding Amizigo and Kyber Network, that's good news for you. And, you know, obviously good news for Ethereum as well. All right, says Buterin said, I'm announcing that 100% of my Amizigo plus Kyber Network advisor shares will be either donated to charity, the AMF, GiveD, Sense, etc., or used to privately fund Ethereum second layer infrastructure, state channels, multi sig wallets, or some combination of the two. Um, I think it would be great if he, um, you know, definitely donated to charity. Obviously, that's good too, but obviously improve the second layer infrastructure of Ethereum as well because it would progress not only the Ethereum network, but progress humanity as a whole. So doing both would be, I think, a good thing to do. Um, obviously, a lot of Ethereum holders are obviously wanting probably the latter more so, but, you know, you can't beat charity. You know, I think he, what he's doing is absolutely incredible, and I think he's got a huge heart. Um, he's already donated, like, you know, $700,000 to a fund for something that was a char it was a charity, but... Um, anyways, the guy's got a big heart. But Buterin noted that all projects eligible to receive f financing from its private fund must be completely open source and have no profit schemes in place. Must be 100% open source, no baked in profit scheme, including ICO token. Must be good, noted Buterin, emphasizing that open source projects, especially those focusing on Ethereum scalability, are struggling to obtain funding. Open source infrastructure projects currently are struggling to get funding without the IC token route. Hopefully, this can help. Given Buterin's support towards open source projects, the same rule of only funding open source projects used by his private fund will likely be applied to the 100 million ECF. TechCrunch reported that giants will be in the range of 50,000 50, to 500,000, and some projects may even receive additional funding to complete long term development of technologies and solutions. Only open source projects will, um, with no project schemes will most likely be eligible for the grants. All right, so in this section, they're going to most likely talk about the, it says, lack of developers working on scaling. Um, the lack of developers currently in the current e Ethereum ecosystem, not a lot going, you know, there's not a ton of developers working on, you know, I mean, there's developers out there, don't get me wrong, but is, you know, are there the, basically a solid team around the Ethereum project? We'll go ahead and read on. Previously, Augur co-founder and cryptocurrency venture capital firm, chief investment officer, Joey Krug, publicly 
expressed his concerns regarding the lack of developers and open source projects working on scaling solutions to enhance the Ethereum network, Krug said. Ethereum really needed more developers on problems like sharding, proof of stake, and plasma. Right now, there simply aren't enough. It should hire some more operations people to help orchestrate it all. For instance, Solidity is just now being um, formally audited. Without open source scaling projects, the Ethereum network will continue to struggle with scaling issues and the network is currently processing just over a million transactions per day, which is actually a lot. But, um, you know, when you compare that to like Swift or, you know, something like that, um, that's pretty much minute. It says Coinbase co-founder Fred Esrim or Ezrim also noted that the Ethereum network would have to improve by 100-fold in order to support decentralized applications with millions of users, a.k.a. mass adoption. So, moving on, scaling solutions needed to address popular dApps. So for those of you that don't know what dApps are, it's all it is is decentralized apps. You know, it'd be like if I went on my iPhone and, you know, actually there is some apps already in beta testing on iPhone that I have downloaded, but... It's not too much different from what you know as an irregular application on maybe a Mac or an Apple phone or Android, but it's in a decentralized manner, meaning that you know people can help run either run that application or it's pretty much already out there. It's a pre-programmed smart contract that is you know basically just a decentralized application. I won't get too much into detail about that. It says over the past few months, the entrance of successful decentralized applications such as CryptoKitties, CryptoCribs, Bancor, and EtherCraft had led the Ethereum blockchain network to struggle with scaling issues because decentralized applications like CryptoKitties can severely congest the Ethereum network by processing several transactions in order. To, I can't even can't even read that seriously. Um, but you know, it's a big problem. Processing several transaction times in order to an order is executed. An efficient scaling solution is necessary to address the growing demand. Um, DAP radar right here, I guess, shows you know balances. Maybe it shows that's the games. I'm not really sure what it's showing here, but maybe transactions. Uh, so that's very interesting. DAP radar. I'm not sure if I've actually heard of that, but that's something I definitely want to check out. Maybe I'll leave, leave a link below for you guys. And to wrap it up, it says the development of scaling solutions as the sharding and plasma that can expand the transaction capacity of the Ethereum network can be sped up through funds and grants systems like ECF. And with that, Ethereum could evolve into a better platform for decentralized applications. So already there are competitors out there like EOS and you have NEO and others, Cardano, when it finishes its project. Um, obviously, those are some of the competitors out there to Ethereum, um, claiming to be that they are, you know, the the end all be all for DApps. Um, even Tron's gonna have DApps. Everybody wants DApps, baby. Um, really, DApps are basically the future of, you know, the way um, you and I are gonna look at applications and conduct business from day to day. Just how. Um, you know, just how some of the apps on our phones and in our computers, you know, change the way we live, you know, and how we operate and literally change our lives from the various forms of, you know, communication or application. So it's very important that Ethereum scales, obviously. It's the number two cryptocurrency um, overall. So obviously in the next, you know, few years, some people are predicting, you know, Pantera Capital founder uh, predicting ethereum is going to be 10 times greater than bitcoin in just two years so two years so they're expecting a lot for ethereum a lot of people are really hoping this project can really scale to the moon so the price can go to the moon as well but really to progress for decentralization in many different areas and radically transform the way we live whereas bitcoin is still going to be a store of value um, it's going to be a way to obviously transfer money but Ethereum is an entire network. It's just going to be, you know, completely radically different. And maybe in the long run, maybe it does surpass Bitcoin. But for the time being, Bitcoin is still king. They're still scaling Bitcoin. Um, they're going to possibly do light contracts on here, light smart contracts. Um, you know, maybe even anonymous features and Bitcoin. Obviously, the Lightning Network is coming. Segwit's already um, implementing on many different systems. Coinbase. 
you know, wallets are defaulting to SegWit, making it quicker already. So it's kind of a precursor of what's to come. Um, prices, you know, are obviously down, but pretty much pegged off of Bitcoin still. But Ethereum is no um, nothing to, you know, definitely don't want to uh, put a blind eye to Ethereum. You definitely want to watch out for that. Um, Bitcoin 39% dominance. So that's pretty high considering the past few weeks. It was down to like 33%, but it's back up to almost 40%. So there's that. But with that being said, guys, if you like this video, make sure you subscribe, give me a thumbs up, comment, leave a comment related post below. Um, and you can also enter into the red coin giveaway, which is RDD. I still got to announce all the winners. I was supposed to do it in this video. But I'll do it in the next video. So it's RDD. Leave, you leave a comment related post with your wallet address, subscribe, thumbs up. And I will see you guys in the next video and at the blockchain. Peace. Hey guys, thanks again for watching this video. If you liked it, make sure you share it. Don't forget to watch one of these videos beside me. And I'll see you guys later. Peace.